On the corner of a dead-end street, somewhere in Tennessee, sits this beautiful 1990s abandoned mansion on over 20 acres of land that will soon be replaced with dozens of townhomes. One thing that always has my mind puzzled is why these big developers push families out of their dream homes just for the sake of them getting rich. The 6,600 square foot home will never be enjoyed ever again. And sadly, that is the fate of many homes just like this all over America. What's up everybody, it's Big Banks, we're back again for another video. Today, we're exploring in the south. Me and Jeremy found this beautiful abandoned mansion. This place is over 6,000 square feet and has been abandoned just for a few years. The guy that lived here unfortunately passed away from Alzheimer's. He was 75 years old and he was in the car business. He was a millionaire. He came from Canada, made his life here, and ultimately met his demise at an old age. And now we're gonna see what's left before this place is completely gone forever. Let's take a look around the outside of the house before we go inside and see what this beautiful place looks like. Now, as you can tell behind me, it speaks for itself, it's beautiful. And I'm excited to show you guys this place. The history behind it's so sad about the guy passing away. And it's sad that this place will ultimately be rubble in no time and replace for cookie cutter homes. Either way, let's check it out before it's gone forever. So it has a long driveway. I want to say this is like on 20 plus acres of land. And this is what the front looks like. It's a very grand home, all brick. Built in 1990, 6,000, over 6,000 square feet with four bedrooms, four and a half bathrooms, two staircases, a game room, everything out here in the country in the south. What a beautiful home. Double doors up front. It's all been very neglected but being owned by a developer they don't really care to do any of that, that stuff like mowing the lawn because the house is just going to become rubble anyways all these trees are going to be cleared out and they're going to just put a bunch of houses here sad story man all these places and there's so many places just like this all around the world these beautiful homes that this one hasn't even been you know around that long like it's built in the 1990s lived in by one family and now it's gonna be gone and never lived in again, never enjoyed again. And there's gonna be a house, you could fit like three houses that they're building right here where this one is. You guys will get a really good feel of what it looks like on the drone. And uh, it's about to start raining anyways. So let's go around right to the back. Let's see what the back looks like. I believe there used to be a pool, but it's been covered in now. But we're gonna go check it out and be sure for ourselves. Guys, we're gonna walk around the back side of the house now, now that we've seen the front and check it out. Now this right here is a pool, okay? So, and now it looks just like it's grass, but they filled it in. So this is all a big pool right here that was covered up with dirt and grass, and now it's overgrown. And the whole place, as you can see, is overgrown. But we have a fountain here, very beautiful fountain, along with this gorgeous stone walkway, gate that goes around, stairs that go down to the lower level, to the garage. And then even back over here, we have the horse stables, which we're gonna check that out at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Let's take a look around this backyard. The front yard was just absolutely gorgeous. And now this one, this is great too. One thing I see when I came back here was this. This is like for baking pizzas. So right here, you would actually throw a homemade pizza in there and it would cook it. And that is actually so incredible. Now it looks like the iron wasn't put up around the entire wall back here because it doesn't look like anything was attached to the brick. There's some seating area, there's beautiful trees, there's wood, and I can imagine this pool looked amazing before it got covered up, but check it out. So overgrown, big mansion. When I was looking this place up online, it said that, one article said it was 6,200 square feet, and one article said it was 6,600 square feet. But either way, it's a huge house, over 6,000 square feet, four bedrooms, four and a half bathrooms, 
you guys know the whole spill because I already told you, but let's walk up a little closer to the house and see what the back looks like. So it's all brick, as you can tell. It looks like we got one giant room here, two stories, four archways made of brick right there. We got Jeremy underneath there filming in this beautiful little backyard. God, I can only imagine what the pool was like. It had to have looked incredible back here. And we're on like 20 acres of land, maybe even more. What a gorgeous brick house. They even did like a little bit of extra detail here, making these bricks come out a little bit more. The little things makes a big difference in a place. They even did a brickwork on all of the flooring over there. I'm not gonna keep you outside any longer. This place looks really cool. I can see a spiral staircase through there. I cannot wait to take you inside. Jeremy, pretty excited to go in here. Yeah, it looks incredible. You guys already know all that. So without further ado, let's go inside and let's see what's left. Today, I'm taking you to a beautiful abandoned $3.6 million mansion that was last owned by a car business mogul. The man came to the States from Toronto, Canada, where he wanted to pursue his passion for cars. He started buying vehicles to rent them out and to start his own rental car company, which ended up being a great success for him. When he decided to move to Tennessee, he met his beloved wife and started a family together. In the 1990s, he had made up his mind on a 20 plus acre plot of land to build his dream home. He and his family spent many years here until his children moved out. But unfortunately, as he grew older, he developed Alzheimer's disease and ultimately that caused him to pass away. The house was then bought by a developer who has plans of tearing it down for townhouses. So join me today and let's see what's left. All right, guys, we made it inside of the abandoned mansion. We're in the grand foyer right now. Me and Jeremy are gonna split ways. He's gonna go this way, I'm gonna go that way. And we're gonna probably meet up in the middle somewhere. But let's take a look at what's left in this abandoned house. And already it's looking spectacular, but let's get right into it. So before I actually show you the really good stuff, like the, like the grand staircase and everything like that, I wanna show you this amazing kitchen, which this is definitely part of the good stuff. Now, like you heard in the beginning, this place was built in 1990 and was only last updated in 1996. So it's a very 90s feeling here. It definitely hasn't been touched. It's pretty much an untouched mansion owned by this car business mogul who was from Canada. Came down here, made himself a millionaire, bought his dream home. We have like this blue and white, like speckled granite countertop here. Very beautiful, love to see stuff like this. Nice sinks, definitely feels like so 90s up in this house, but we do have some very updated uh, you, like equipment like this. Like we have your dishwasher here, which is not bad at all. It's all stainless steel appliances. We have a massive KitchenAid fridge right here. And this is like the only fridge, this is the kind of fridges you see in mansions. Ones that are just ridiculously big. And if we take a look above us, we have the nice molding all across this entire kitchen. We have the two ovens over there by General Electric. Even have a fireplace, it goes to another little sitting room there. This is your dining room right here. That's probably your main dining room, your like formal dining room. And this is where you would have like another little table for breakfast, some sort of thing like that. Now, if we take a look around, you can see all of the cabinets this is very well put together. Not such a gaudy house like we thought it was gonna be when we pulled up, but everything is stuck together. It's mold covering everything too. So I'm gonna be careful what I touch. 
Here's our stove by Gin Air. And I typically see Gin Air in older houses, like 90s, 70s, things like that. And they usually are always still there. I don't see anything new by Gin Air at all. Do they even make new stuff like that? And then check out the tiling. There was an oven hood right here, but it looks like they removed that. But you can tell it was probably beautiful. Probably matched all the cabinetry in here with this nice wood. This tile is nice. You got the corn. Uh, I think that's artichoke. The fish, the onions, the peppers. Very nice design. Archways, recessed lighting. There's even like um, intercom system in the house. And all the recessed lighting is very nice. Chandelier in there. We're going to take a look around all of it. You got the two ovens here by General Electric. So very nice. This is probably where your microwave went, but it's all gone. And it looks like they removed all of the handles from the cabinets. So there's no handles anymore. So it makes me wonder what they were trying to do with this place. But ultimately this is going to be torn down and in its place are going to go hundreds of townhomes and things like that. Cause we're on a pretty decent amount of acreage right now. This place we just found last night at 2.30 a.m. I was driving, I called Jeremy, I said, hey look, we found this abandoned castle. This place Jeremy found while we were just on the phone, told me to come check it out. I came and checked it out at 2.30 in the morning. Sure enough, we had a video here and this is amazing. I'm glad sh I'm showing you this. So let's keep walking around and see the cool architecture of this place and uh, yeah, how they lived. So as you can see, they have this nice, nice fireplace here and the very, very amazing brickwork. And it is a wood burning, which is really nice to see. It's not like a gas or anything like that. Let's take a look at the other side. So we go from this like marble tile onto this hardwood floor, which is still really nice hardwood floor. Got a storage area right here. And like I said, this had to have been the um, formal dining room, but the fireplace is actually one of those double fireplaces. So it goes all the way through. I don't know if that's the correct term for it. Yeah. So you have, you're able to have a fire on both sides. If you wanted one in the dining room or if you wanted one in there, but this is our former, this is, but this is our formal dining room, no chandelier or anything, but I imagine they had a really nice big table and was very good for getting together and things like that. But I also could be wrong guys. I also could be wrong about this room. This could be a hangout area. This could have been where they had couches and, and things like that, but it's hard to tell when there's not furniture, but we're just taking a, a guesstimate and what I say could change from room to room. So we'll find out as we go. What is this? This just looks like a closet and there's a secondary staircase actually right behind this. But guys, you haven't even seen the main staircase yet. So <laughs> really excited to show you guys that. That's going to be pretty cool. Um, but let's go around this side of the house and then we'll make our way to the front foyer onto that side, upstairs, downstairs, everything, the basement. We're going to see it all today. So right here we have a desk. Um, this is probably where they did like their paperwork, their bills and everything like that. The intercom system is right here, which also comes with a cassette player radio and all that stuff. So you could play music throughout the whole house, which is a quite cool feature. Again, the nice cabinetry in here, the very cool tiling on the back side, on the back of this, the backsplash to my right, they have removed the door handles. And again, they've removed all the, the knobs and everything except for right here on this drawer. But other than that, they removed all the knobs from every one of the the cabinets. 
But this is your washroom, again with the recessed lighting and the crown molding above the top there. Kind of like this, this yellowish beige um, color paint throughout the house. So your washer and dryer would have been right here. You probably had stuff hanging up there. All of your supplies, cleaning supplies would have gone in here. This is just your, your typical washroom for one of these. I believe this thing right here is an ironing board. I think, yeah. So we have an ironing board with a little plug-in. So we're gonna exit. And we're gonna go to the first little thing to our right here, which is just a little closet space. But there's these metal things in here. Looks like they slid some storage. They would have some like sliding and locking mechanisms on it. So I'm wondering what they put there. Right back this way, we have another little like desk looking area. Um, I'm not sure what this would have been used for. It's almost like a little bar, but not a bar at the same time. Really neat, to say the least. Definitely a 90s sink right here. Storage closet. This door actually leads to the outside, to the back. We have a little crawl space that goes underneath the staircase, which I imagine I would have used that for like my dog or my cat. I think I'd put like their little room back there. And this is your secondary staircase, which it is, it is nice as well. But the main one is like a spiral staircase, which is very, very gorgeous. You know, really nice woodwork, really, um, really nice thought put into this, the railing and everything. I like this style a lot. This leads down into the basement, which we'll check out probably towards the end of the video. But there's one massive room right here. And look, there's even a little pocket door that goes to this room. Now, I think this is just an entertainment room. I think this is just a game room. It's really, really, really big. But they have multiple areas for entertaining. They have this like little desk shelf area right here. Has a little pull out sliding thing for like your keyboards and whatnot like that. All of this probably had TV systems, things like that. This is definitely like the game room, entertainment room of the house. It is so large. Everything in here is very nice too. They didn't take the knobs out of this one though. You could do so much in this room and check it out. They even have like a little bench area right here. It looks like they had like a little, this was hanging up there so it was a shelf. They would hang up there. And even a chalkboard on the wall. Looks like the stuff that the kids drew were still here. Because the last man that lived here was 75 years old when he died. And the house has been abandoned ever since. But also in this room, there's a closet. Decent size too. Plenty of space. So yeah, that's the, the game room of the house. Very cool. I almost missed this little bathroom right here. Not too shabby looking. It's got the blue paint throughout. Got the nice big size toilet. The shower here, definitely a very 90s feel. This whole house, I think, I read the last update was 1996 when they remodeled this place. So it didn't really get to change much from the time it was built. All right, now we're gonna walk towards the other side of the house, see what's left down there. Check out the grand foyer, then go upstairs and then end on the basement. Hope you guys are enjoying this. We're actually gonna end on the, uh, the stables. So you wanna stay for that. This is a big property. Uh, from what I could find, this house is worth about $3.5 million, $3.6 million in that general area. But let's keep looking around. I think I actually just found the actual formal dining room because the chandelier is hanging really low, but it's very beautiful. So let's take a look at it. So this is the main dining room and check it out. It's got a nice, beautiful tray ceiling and the chandelier is still here and it's in good shape. And you guys can already get a little peek of that foyer over there with that beautiful staircase, but check it out. We're in the formal dining room right now. Chandelier hangs really low. So your table can go right here and you have plenty of light 
And I can imagine they had very nice stuff in here, the way this house is built. That tray ceiling is amazing. I love that. And check out the wallpaper that they had in this room. It looks like doves or quail, different kinds of pheasants and things like that. I love a room with some cool wallpaper. So imagine this is your, your main dining room. You come in here and you have dinner with your family around the holidays, things like that. I can imagine it was amazing. I just love this room. I can imagine the kind of table they had up in here. And then they also have their intercom system in here. So you have private on and off volume, inside patio talk, door talk, and call. So you could talk from like any room of the house in here. But yeah, that is our formal dining room here. And I just love this chandelier. Still, I'm glad it's still here. Most of the time, those are some of the first things that ever goes. But thankfully, there's really no vandalism here. This place is pretty untouched. Now, let's see this grand foyer. Wow. The staircase. What a beautiful staircase. The railings go all the way around. It has like this little rounded off area right there. It goes up there. It's, it's, this, is, this is a magnificent staircase. Very grand. You can kind of get a really good feel of this curve right here. What a beautiful staircase. And I love this. I love this flooring. I think this is called herringbone flooring. If I'm wrong, please correct me, but I believe this is herringbone. And I can imagine the furniture being in here, a big Turkish rug or Persian rug laying right here. If it's the holidays, probably a Christmas tree because you can put a really big one in here. It looks like there was a chandelier at some point, but it's gone now. But can you imagine having a Christmas tree in here and all this decked out on Christmas stuff with this beautiful staircase, lights going up it. I'm just imagining what I would do to the place if it were mine. But sadly, nobody will ever live in this house again because it is going to be demolished. Now the color of the walls actually changes to this olive green when we get to this foyer. And it goes down this hallway too. But the rest of it down that way is more like a beige yellow color. We have some sliding doors that lead to outside. Again, that's our back porch. You have all the archways on the back porch there. Probably would have been a lot of seating out there and then the pool, obviously, just beautiful. And these are the front doors of the home. Very large front doors. I believe they're about eight feet tall. Got the golden brass handles there, all your light switches. This would have been your security stuff right here. Beautiful front porch. You can see all the, all the brick that's laid out there. The grand foyer of this place is no short of amazing. Now we're gonna go this way into this room, which I believe is gonna be our formal living room. So it's very, very nice in here. Again, a tray ceiling going all around this one. The marble fireplace here, the black marble fireplace. How gorgeous is that? The black on white is always like my favorite thing. I love black and white colors. I mean, that's just what I wear a lot. You know, I got black and white shoes and I just like that, that style of things. Now it looks like the back doors were busted open somehow, which I don't, I feel like this wasn't vandals because there's nothing else wrong with the house besides this. So I feel like maybe it was an animal or maybe a storm because they, there is like some bad storms that come through here, but there is glass everywhere. And I want to say this had a frame on it. This nice little mirror here. It's got this like gold designs all around it. But let's get back to this formal living room. 
We have that same kind of olive color on the walls in here, the double windows on each side. We have this beautiful fireplace, like I said before. And then when you're facing this way, it goes to those French doors out there, it goes to the back, the back porch. You have the pillars in here. You can see the beautiful staircase. And this would have had some amazing furniture, carpets, rugs. We're gonna make our way this way. So when we go to our right, this is the master bedroom, guys. Now check that out. Look at that ceiling. That is one of the coolest ceilings I've seen in a house. I think I believe it's a, still a tray ceiling, but it's very deep. It's a deep tray ceiling. And it's all purple in here. Very, very lavender purple in this bedroom. Yeah, see, I'm thinking it was a storm or something because like it's just on this side where things got broken. This window's broken. Very purple room. I imagine they had a grand bed right here, king size, maybe even California king. The recessed lighting is all around the tray ceiling. Probably would have had nice furniture in here because this is a very large master bedroom. Very purple in here too. <laughs> very, very purple. Not only that, you get some French doors that lead outside to the back porch from your bedroom. I would hope that they would have some sort of like curtains that hang up here, you know, just in case. Um, but yeah, hardwood flooring throughout and this purple is just crazy. <laughs> it's lavender color and I just love the ceiling guys, I can't get over it. But I feel like it would really come together with a nice chandelier, but I don't think there was ever one there. It just looks really cool as it is. And I'm seeing to my left over here, the master bathroom, and it looks incredible. First off, we have some pocket doors that go in here. But look at this tub, guys. Wow. That is a grand tub, let me tell you. You have these marble steps to get up into this purple tub. So they really like purple. Not only that, they had the red light therapy in this bathroom. Looks like that's all lighting that was taken out, probably from the, the vanity from this. Yeah. So here's all your light bulbs and stuff. Very cool in here. And th that lavender color still comes in here. This counter was taken out, and I believe it was over there on that wall. So it looks like they were gonna strip it, but kind of just gave up. I loved like the little mosaic tiles on the bathtub. Really put a lot of thought and detail into it. This is one part of the closet. Big walk-in closet here. Looks like they stripped everything out of it though. But then there's another room right here, but I think this is just where the toilet is in the shower. Yeah even a purple toilet to match the purple tub. And then your shower is right here. Pretty decent sized shower too. I'm really happy that I get to show you guys this place and Jeremy gets to join me. Everybody send prayers up to Jeremy though because uh, he hurt his foot in a motorcycle accident and uh, he's still out exploring. What a G this guy is. What'd you say? What'd you say? <laughs> you're talking about me. My foot's fine. You know? Dude, look, he's still exploring. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. My foot's perfect. I feel like a young whippersnapper. <laughs> Yeah, Jeremy's all right. He got in a little motorcycle accident, but yeah. he's yeah. he's chilling. Like three weeks ago, I broke my foot in the desert on my motorcycle. <laughs> three days ago, I hurt my back in the gym. Pinched his nerve. I'm, in his... I'm not doing well. <laughs> Still getting it done though. The things, <laughs> yeah. the things we do for these places. Yeah, the things we do. <laughs> so 
So when we exit the master bedroom, we have a door here. Whoa. What is going on here? It smells like just wood. It's just a lot of wood chips everywhere. It's just studs in here. It's not very much going on. Little tiny storage closet right here. But then we enter into this like gentleman's room, this like office space type area. You can tell this is really like gentleman's room type thing. Got the nice woodwork going around. The wood on the walls down here. This is more the cabinetry, which probably covered up some of that stuff right there. All the drawers are here. I can imagine this is where he had like a desk and would work on his, his business from home type thing. No special ceiling in here, but we do have the nice crown molding with the green strip that goes along the top to give it that little nice accent. Even the, the shutters, the blinds, are like a wood, just like the rest of this stuff in here. We have a little built-in cabinet right there under that window. And of course, this room has a closet, kind of a smaller, closet but it's not really like for clothing like i said this is more for like probably books storage things like that for like office stuff and your water heater is also back here which is a nice whirlpool water heater so this is like your gentleman's room your office your your thing like that you know see these a lot in mansions like this especially self-employed people i just noticed this right here they did have a love for horses so it's no surprise to me that this Light switch is like a, a horse drawing. But then right to my right here, we have another bathroom, which did have a sink right here, but it has been since taken out and everything like that. But it's a nice little archway mirror, kind of in like more like a brownish color of, a, of walls in here and your green toilet. So like everything that they have was more like, was definitely, fit the colors of each room. All right, so we just filmed all of downstairs. Now it's time to head upstairs and see what's left in all the, all the bedrooms. And then make our way to the basement and then probably end it on the, uh, the stables outside. And then we're gonna head to our next house, which is literally about 50 yards that way. <laughs> so, um, but we have a lot of places to film on this little trip. But without further ado, let's head on upstairs. Let's see what's left up there. See the architecture of this beautiful 1990s mansion. All right. So we made it to the top of the stairs. We'll have a look down and we'll see. So beautiful. Love to see things like this. I can only imagine what the chandelier in here look like though. So we're gonna start off by going around this way. And we can see this very nice window here. Really add some more beauty to the place. Let's walk right through here. This is gonna be our first bedroom upstairs. Now in here, the color of the walls is like a greenish yellow. It's kind of weird, the color. Now I'm noticing all along the walls here is a shelf. So maybe they had like little knickknacks all the way across the whole room. I just wonder whose room this was. Was it a kid's? Was it a guest room? Something like that. Not much left in here. Got a plain Jane old carpet in here. Nothing too special about it, but you know, this could have just been a guest room or just a room for kids. So if it's room for kids, they probably wouldn't care too much to put a super nice carpet in here just because kids sometimes like to, you know, spill things and whatnot, but maybe that was their deal. But then at least this hallway, which has a little bit of storage space and a very own bathroom. Now this bathroom in particular has a skylight, which is very cool to see. Some of the, the knobs and stuff are still in here, so that's not bad. You got a toilet over there. You got this green strip that goes along the top of this where the crown molding is. And this is probably a closet, I wanna say, yeah. This is a big closet too. Guys, like for a guest room or a kid's room, this is a giant closet. My closet at my house is not even this big. I have a walk-in closet, but it's not this big. <laughs> and this is just a guest room. That tells you a lot about people with a lot of money. You know, they can do things like this. 
Now, this room is a little creepy when you walk back here. It's just kind of insulation. It's really, really quiet back here. This is the attic of the house. Walk in here, but it actually goes all the way around there too. There's actually some stuff. There's some tiles and stuff left up here. But yeah, it's just insulation and wood floors, you know, plywood floors up in here. Not too much going on in the attic. That was our first bedroom upstairs. So now we need to go back around to the side. So it's looking like there's a bedroom right here to my right. It's a pretty decent sized bedroom too. It's all blue in here, as you can see, like a baby blue color. The nice little seating area here with the windows. Ceiling is caving in a bit, but this house is going to come down all together. But baby blue room with like a blue carpet. I don't know why this carpet is this color. I feel like it wasn't originally this like bluish color. I don't even know if you guys can tell on camera, but it's like a faint blue color. And there was stuff hanging up here. Bed probably went here or here. You never really know about these rooms. But these guest rooms in these big mansions like this are always huge. Like you could call these master bedrooms in normal houses. And a lot of normal houses don't even have master bedrooms this big. And it also has its own bathroom. Definitely outdated. Then we're gonna head on into this bathroom, which, oh my gosh, this bathroom actually has a nice tub in it. And it also has its own skylight as well. Nice little pink dub with a pink tile on the floors, pink sink, pink cabinets, pink toilet, and then this like light green wall. So it's like a pink and green combo, which is, I like, I actually like that combo a lot. You can see a little arch up there, the recessed lighting. So that is bedroom number two upstairs. But we're also going to see that this room leads straight out. This bathroom is connected to this open part right here, which I would think is more of an entertainment section of the house. They probably had like games and stuff up here. They probably had couches because, or, you know, they could have, this could be classified as a bedroom. You never know. If it's a bedroom, then there's a Jack and Jill bathroom. So this could very well be a bedroom. It's just that these stairs, you know, lead up here, but you know, that could be how it is. The upstairs isn't as big as the downstairs. Like that's pretty much all of upstairs. Now what we have left is the basement. So when we go down to the basement, we're going to see what's left down there, the garage and all that stuff. It's a three car garage. And then we'll end it on the stables outside. But yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you are, hit that subscribe button, leave a like down below. Also check out Jeremy um, in the description and let's keep on exploring. Let's go see what's in the basement right now. All right guys, time to head down into the basement. These creepy stairs. Gets really dark down here. So, this is what we first see. This is actually a door that leads directly outside. This goes underneath the staircase. You can see like no personal items were left in here at all, but you never know when you get to the basement. The basement could be full of stuff. To my right is actually the garage, which we have a three car garage. Pretty large too at that. If you did it right, you could fit way more than three cars in here. It's really dark and, but if you, like I said, if you did it right, you could fit way more than three cars in here. You could pull a car even back over here. Look, there's even tire marks. So they definitely pulled something back here. Probably getting to more of like a workshop type feel right here, but the spider webs are great. See down here, look at that. That's all spider webs going there. So it's like they were gonna redo the place and then just like quit. And then it got bought by a developer. But they have all this wood here, places for tools, stuff like that. And this is definitely like the little workshop station right here. You can see where all the tools would have hung up on this. He even left some things behind. Drill press, stuff like that. But check this out. This looks like maybe a little storm shelter thing. I don't know. It's weird. Back there, there's a bunch of just stuff randomly strewn about. And a little ladder to get up there. This is a little bit of things left in here. 
some spray paint, some brush cleaner, bricks. There's a bunch of bricks right here that you can still use. Another water heater. It's like this concrete like opening. It's kind of crazy looking. Feels like a shelter. So dark down here. This goes to all your, uh, your breaker boxes and whatnot. And then we have actually a bedroom down here in the basement. So this is like your, your fourth bedroom. Got the wood flooring, spider webs everywhere. I'm gonna see if you guys can see this. Can you guys see how many spider webs are all through this? This is crazy. It's even got two closets, not as big as like the normal closets downstairs. You have the drop ceiling in here. Another little concrete little space. All right, now that we've checked out the entire interior of the house, it's time to go to the stables, and that's where we're in this video. So I hope you stayed till this point. Let's go check out the stables. I feel like there's stuff left in there. I can just see it from, from inside the house, and I'm pretty excited to take you, so, take you guys over there. If you guys have enjoyed this video, comment your favorite part of this house, leave a like down below, and check out Jeremy. Let's go to the stables now, and let's see what's left out there. Making our way down to the stables. Let's see what's left down here. The back side of the mansion is starting to rain. So let's get in here quick. It looks like a really nice stable building. So this is what we see when we walk into the stables. Not in bad shape. Not much going on here though. They made it pretty nice. I wonder if they had it where Somebody could stay in here, but it's not really looking like it too much. This is where they kept all their horses, kept horses out in that fence right there, out behind. Yeah, sorry, not much to the stables, but this is what we see. I wanted to show you guys everything about this place. So with that being said, we're gonna call it a day and we're gonna go on to our next location. The next location we're not filming until tomorrow, but we're gonna go check it out and see what it's like. Anyways guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that subscribe button, leave a like down below, comment your favorite part of this abandoned mansion. Check out Jeremy down in the description. And until next time, Big Banks out.